guys, it's me Chrissy and I'm here with a book versus movie uh, review slash chat on The Graduate by Charles Webb. Thus, my 60s inspired makeup. I kind of did the whole eye thing with the twiggy under eye and then they did the um, nude lip thing going on. And I was supposed to like tease my hair in the back but I decided not to damage my hair. <laughs> so. This is as good as it's gonna get. Anyway, um, I just finished watching the movie, and it, I'm just gonna put that down. And um, my review for it is it's pretty good, actually. I thought, in some sense, it was better than the book, where um, mostly because the director included some of act some of the actual conversations from the book, and. So that helped lend a sense of authenticity to the movie where it was being true to the book. And of course, with these adaptations, you can't stop um, some changes from happening. But it made, the, it made more sense in the movie rather than you have to go through it um, in the book. So for like, visually, it was good. Um, I thought that the soundtrack was very um, accurate. It was very good. Like. It actually kind of reminded me of if you've ever watched the Korean drama um, Boys Over Flowers and during these shopping montages where they're like taking the girl out and making her go shopping. Uh, there's like a school nearby so lots of people are getting picked up if you hear the background noise. Anyway, the shopping montages when they're um, in the show and then like they play the entire like three minute song. That's what makes every episode like an hour long. <laughs> And that reminded, and this movie reminded me of that where like in the beginning they play like the whole song by Simon, Simon and Garfunkel, um, Hell Darkness, My Old Friend. I'm not, I don't remember the title but I remember that um, first line and it really fit into the mood of what you were trying to get. Like it, in the book actually it just starts off as him wanting to be alone because there's a party but in the movie it starts it starts as he arrives in from the airport to his home so it really ex it really helped you sort of get into the mind of what the main character was probably feeling and um, yeah that's about it really for the I, I'm just looking at my notes and most of it's about the soundtrack uh, yeah so that's it for the movie um, now for the book. Um, the, Benjamin, the main character, comes home from college and all he wants to do is be alone but his parents are like, the so-and-sos are here, greet them, they want to say hello, they want to say congratulations and he's like, dad, I just want to take a walk, I just need to be alone, I need to focus on thinking about my future because he comes home from graduate school and he's got this scholarship or something, a prize to be a teacher and he does and he realizes after all of these years at school he doesn't want to be in education anymore he doesn't want to go back to school he doesn't even like referring to himself as an intellectual and it's almost like his from the start you get the feeling that his, he, his parents are so so proud of him that in, in a way they don't even really consider his feelings they just think that what they think is what he thinks of himself so they're like oh show them this do this there's even an argument between Benjamin and his father saying um, I'm just a status symbol for you and then later on you find out that his dad actually didn't think of it like that but and they have a heart-to-heart -heart later on because um, Benjamin isn't he completely just doesn't go back to school he's like I believe he's a bit depressed because um, all he does is stay at home and he lays out in the pool like all day and then his dad is like you know what are you doing with your life and in the book it's very endearing because his dad really does try to get um, his perspective on it but in the movie it was just them like you know ranting what are you gonna do with your life blah 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 it wasn't really as well done from the book but then again in the book it's mostly dialogue and it was considered avant-garde to write that way because you know how sometimes in a, um, in a sentence with a quote they say like oh she said at the end or like oh he was or he frowned like that this one it's just sentences uh with the dialogue but you can't really see what the emotions behind it that's why i find the movie better 
because the actors could actually really um, put their own kind of spin on it, but it was perfect. And um, so yeah, that's it about Benjamin and his dad. Now Benjamin and his mom, I find are it, it's actually really it's kind of an intimate relationship because she's she's asking him like what's wrong, and then he's and then she said, but don't tell me if you're just gonna lie to me, and then. He, he tells his mom like, yeah, I go out and I drink and then I just stay at a hotel all night because I don't want to drive back home, um, you know, drunk. And she's like, I told you not to say anything if you're just going to lie. And that's, uh, that's unfortunately wasn't included in the movie. And I'm like, you know, it would have been great to get both of their per both parents' perspectives on him rather than just, you know, the dad. And then, you know, it's all about Mrs. Robinson. But we'll get to that later. Um... So, in the height of his, like, I would, I wouldn't, I w hesitate in calling it depression because I am not an expert and so I cannot um, fully say he was depressed, but in the height of his, like, disillusionment, I would say, uh, with school and with life, he decides to take a trip where he doesn't want to be with any intellectuals, he just wants to go off on his own and, um, like work odd jobs, talk to farmers, like hitchhike, and then he comes back after like two weeks, and he is even worse than before, and that's when he decides to start the affair with Mrs. Robinson, who, backtracking to the night of the party, um, makes her makes him take her home, and then you know she like tries to seduce him and all that. And so he's back from the trip and then he decides to start this affair with Mrs. Robinson. Mostly I think it seems like out of boredom because later on when he's talking to Mr. Robinson about what happened, when he's talking to Mr. Robinson about what happened, he describes their affair as something like a handshake. So it wasn't even that passionate. And then they barely talk, you know, they just turn off the lights in the hotel room and stuff, but it's not like it's romantic or anything. And then when he and Mrs. Robinson try to have a conversation, it just, it sucks. They can't, they don't talk. And one of the times when they did talk, it ended up being about Elaine, and Mrs. Robinson tells Benjamin, you know, promise me, swear you will not take out my daughter. And, oh, I forgot to mention that Mr. and Mrs. Robinson are partners of uh, Benjamin's parents, so, in a sense, it's like, oh, you know, date my daughter, but it's not really serious. But it just became even more not serious when, you know, Benjamin started the affair with Mrs. Robinson. But anyway, we find out that Mrs. Robinson is only married to Mr. Robinson because of the social expectations at the time. This book is from 1963, and if they're in college by this age, that means that she probably had to get married sometime in the 50s. Which, of course, if you get pregnant, you have to get married, because she got pregnant. And so, because of the social expectation, she was forced into this marriage with Mr. Robinson. Because she even says she doesn't love him and she doesn't hate him. They're just married. And they don't even sleep in the same bedroom. They're like in separate bedrooms. Even Elaine kind of noticed that they're not very uh, together. Um, so it seems like that's it, really. Um, I actually didn't very much like the, di the way the dialogue was written. Uh, because they found it confusing and I couldn't really tell what they were thinking or feeling until I watched the movie and Now on to Elaine Robinson she becomes the sort of um, Apple of his eye after he takes her out on a date and then he can't see her anymore. So of course that just makes him want her and then I mean she's smart she when they went on a date and she tries they want to go to a bar and then he takes her to the same hotel that he has an affair with Mrs. Robinson. The staff, because she, I think she looks like a younger version of Mrs. Robinson, um, they greet Benjamin like they know him. And she's like, hey, were you having an affair? And he said, and he admits, yeah. So you see, she's not stupid. But then throughout the rest of the book, it's like she flip-flops. Like she's saying she hates him because Mrs. Robinson told Elaine that, oh, you raped my mother. I mean, that she was raped by Benjamin. And so then when she confronts Benjamin about it and he says it's a lie, which it was, um, she ends up going, where are you going? Are you going to stay? Like, what are you going to do? Because he follows her to Berkeley. And, and then it's just like, okay, so you hated him. And then now you care about like where he goes and stuff. And then after that, 
later on, she comes back to his apartment and she goes, can you kiss me? I'm like, are you serious? Can you decide? Like, just like leave him alone. Like, girl, he's not good enough for you. But no, no. Oh, God. It just, mm. She wasn't, that's the part about like Elena, I don't understand. Like, she wasn't written that well. Like, Mrs. Robinson actually seems to have layers to her. Like, she's not who she, you know, she's not just who she presents. There's more to her. But with Elaine, I mean, I get it. She's described as, you know, sincere, open-hearted, naive. But, mm, man, that just, that just kind of annoyed me, though. And then she agrees. Well, actually, she doesn't really agree to marry him. She's just kind of like, I don't know. It won't work out. But then he's still like, yeah, we should get married. We should get married. And then Mr. Robinson, when he finally finds... Um, Benjamin in his apartment he says um, is there something I did to offend you is there something of my way of life that you disagree with is there you don't respect me very much do you and I was like seriously I mean I get it like it's his wife and his daughter that was like messed with but at the same time like okay like it's like all he thinks about like is himself I'm like uh. but then again like Benjamin kind of did just wreck like their whole family unit <sighs> anyway, um, the dad takes Elaine and then um, he f Benjamin finds out she's getting married and then he interrupts the he interrupts the um, the ceremony and he escapes with her and then they run on a bus and um, in the book actually I find that the the feeling or the sensation or the um, portrayal was quite almost the same as the movie but in the book there's a part where she goes Benjamin and he goes what and then and then it just says the bus moves and then that's the end of the book but in the movie they just sort of smile at each other and then you hear the same song playing um, from the be from the beginning of the movie um, Hello Darkness my old friend and then it just brings back and then you're just thinking like okay so he's accomplished this but he doesn't really know what he's doing still and it's beautiful because I read a review um, on this book so I was trying to make sense of it because I had this overwhelming dislike of it I liked the movie though but then when I read the book I said oh I didn't like it very much and uh, this one review I read said that this is a, an important book at a time coming when um, this generation the 60s generation uh, had a slower time growing up because they didn't have war I think so but their parents because they had war I think you know the 40s and 50s um, they grew up with a lot of war, so be so they were, became adults very quickly. But this one uh, represents a time of uncertainty. So I read anyway. So I don't really know much about the 60s uh, in America. But yeah. And also, what was really funny was I was watching a movie when Benjamin was trying to reach Elaine. And then the, in the song in the background was playing Mrs. Robinson. And I'm like, oh! Okay, that's interesting. And then I found out that Simon and Garfunkel wrote two songs meant for uh, this movie, and one of them was Mrs. Robinson. Um, later on, though, the director said that at first, coming out, everybody hated Mrs. Robinson, but then later on, he had more sympathy towards her. And now, if we were to watch the movie, Benjamin just seems kind of like a spoiled kid. He actually ended up reminding me just a little bit of the kids from um, Less Than Zero by Brett Easton Ellis. So this is kind of like a chat rant versus, I don't know, I very much like the movie over the book. So I'm not sure if that's a very highly unpopular opinion, but if you guys watch the movie, if you read the book, you know, let's discuss down below because I'm actually very, very interested in talking about it because I just kind of want to understand more because it's such a short book. And Hannah Tay from Hannah Tay <laughs> recommended this as the perfect road trip book. And I think she's right because it's very fast paced. So um, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking around. Um, have you read this book? If you have, let's discuss in the comments down below. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.